So before we move on to the scattering states, I want to say a few more words about this particular equation that we obtained. So last time we found that in order to find the energy levels that are allowed under the uh, finite square well for the bound states, we need to solve this equation. So solving this, we will find the value of z where this equation is satisfied. And then using those values of z, we will be able to deduce what the value of L is, which would allow us to deduce what the energy level E should be. But you can see that it is impossible to, uh, to obtain a closed form solution for this equation. So we will have to graph this and see whether intersections occur to find the values of z for which this equation is satisfied. So let's try to graph this and see what happens. So let's say this is your z-axis, and then this is f of z. So first let's try to graph tangent z. So tangent z is going to look something like this. So it's going to go all the way to infinity, and this will be pi over 2. And then it's going to emerge from the bottom again, and then shoot all the way up to infinity again. And then this time this is going to be 3 over 2 pi. And then this behavior just keeps repeating itself over and over. So this will be 5 over 2 pi, and so on. So this is how a tangent z graph would look like. And over here for this graph, uh, you have z not divided by z squared, and you can see that when z is uh, when z tends towards zero, this term is going to tend towards infinity. So that's going to be all the way. This uh, graph is going to go, be all the way up here when it is close to the origin. And then you can see that when z is equal to z naught, this term is going to be equal to one. So you get one minus one, which is equal to zero. So this graph, uh, this function over here, is going to intersect your z-axis at z0. So let's say z0 takes on a value at uh, this particular point. So your graph is going to eventually intersect the z-axis at this particular point. And then you can see that uh, as z uh, becomes larger and larger, uh, this term is going to become smaller and smaller. So you can guess uh, your graph is going to look something like this. So when it tends towards 0, it's going to tend to be close to infinity. And then as z increases in value, this graph is going to decrease in value, so it's going to go down. And then eventually it is going to intersect the z-axis at the very point z0. So this is what your graph is going to look like. And in this particular case, uh, for this particular value of z0, you can see that there are three intersections. So you, you can call this z1, you can call this z2, you can call this z3. So these three values would be the values uh, for which, uh, using which this equation will be satisfied. So using these values of z, you will be able to deduce what your value of L is, which would allow you to deduce what the value of E is. So that's how you would use a graph to find your energy levels. And notice that uh, I didn't graph the side uh, on the left of your vertical axis because you can see that z is equal to LA and L is just equal to the square root, which is positive. So it makes no sense for us to look for uh, the uh, to look for values of z which are negative. So we're only going to be focusing on the values on the right hand side of the vertical axis. And you can see that beyond z naught, uh, the, the term inside the square root is going to become ne uh, negative. So the square root of negative is imaginary, so we, uh, the graph uh, pretty much just stops right at this very point. So this is the only section of the graph that we need to concern ourselves with. And so this is how uh, uh, finding solutions for this equation would work, would work out uh, using graphs. So one interesting thing to do is to consider some limits. So uh, recall that your constant z0 is equal to a times 2mv0 divided by h bar. So first we're going to consider a case where it is uh, where we're dealing with a wide and deep well. So what that means is that <clears throat> when I say wide, that means a is sufficiently large. And when I say deep well, that means v0 is also sufficiently large. And so that would give me a potential that looks something like this. So this is negative a, this is positive a, and then the graph is your potential is going to go all the way down. And then you can see and you can tell that if v0 tends towards a large number, you're going to get a very deep well. And then you would expect that the case to start to resemble the infinite square well, and then we can actually show that for a deep well, for a wide and deep well, the energy levels do actually tend towards the results that you got for the infinite square well. So you can take a look at uh, what, uh, what happens to this expression for a wide and deep well. So if you take a look at this expression, if you have a wide and deep well, which means a is large and v0 is large, 
then that means z0 is going to be very large. So that means this term inside the square root is going to be very large. And so that means if you graph this, so let's say this is z, this is f of z, and once again you have your tangents. And because this graph is going to be very large, that means your graph is going to be, going to be all the way up top, and then you, you can see that it will intersect at uh, the, your tangent z graph at locations very close to pi over 2, it will intersect your tangent z graph at locations very close to 3 over 2 pi, it will intersect at locations very close to 5 over 2 pi, and so on. So you can see that based on the intersections, you can see that the values of z will take on a general form of n pi divided by 2, where n is equal to 1, 3, 5, and so on. So all odd numbers. So you can see that this is 1 pi over 2, 3 pi over 2, 5 pi over 2, and so on. And then uh, z is equal to la. And then don't forget l is equal to 2n e plus v naught divided by a, uh, divided by h bar times a, and n pi divided by 2. And so we can rearrange this a bit. So you get e plus v naught is equal to n square pi square h bar square divided by 2a square and then divided by 2m. And you can see that this is exactly the expression we got for the energy levels for the infinite square well. The only difference is that when we were dealing with the infinite square well for the example in the book, uh, we had this expression. So instead of 2a squared, we had a squared because we were dealing with a well to between 0 and a. But this time, the well is between negative a to positive a. So it makes sense that instead of a, we have two a, instead of a squared, we have 2a squared. And then you can see that on the left hand side, we have e plus v naught. So what exactly, what, is, what exactly e plus v naught means is that uh, let's say this is v naught, and then your energy level is e. So this distance over here will be e plus v naught. So it's pretty much just this minus this. So e minus negative v naught. So e plus v naught will represent the energy level uh, between the energy difference between your energy level and the bottom of the well. And you would expect that this uh, difference to tends towards the, the result of the infinite square well for a wide and deep well and that is, exa that is exactly what we have obtained. So this makes perfect sense. So another uh, limit we can consider is a shallow and uh, a, a shallow and a narrow well. So that would, uh, if you t take a look at your z naught once again, which is equal to this expression. So if your well is shallow, that means your v naught is going to be small. And if it is narrow, then that means a is also going to be small. And you can see that if z0 is small, that means this intersection, instead of happening over here, it's going to happen all the way back here because your z0 is going to be very small. And then instead of this long graph that you see over here, instead you're going to see something like this. And you can see that it is only going to intersect at one particular spot. But you can see that no matter how small z0 gets, it is still always going to intersect uh, your tangent z graph at some point. So uh, that is another interesting limit to take.